Alright, now I'm going to show y'all how what's in here. <clears throat> You need a 5 16 socket or nut driver. And you only got to loosen these four bolts here. You don't have to take none of this off. Apart, it just comes apart like that. Now you got these springs, you don't want to lose these springs. Let me show you what's in here. Now you've got, you've notice you got some wires here you don't usually see in a different regulator. Now I'm going to pull all this apart so you can see it. It all comes apart pretty easy. Now, I used to have a junkyard, may not. And that's kind of stuck, so just holding it inside. Get a knock, comes right out. Now, I'm going to show you. A little bit in here. Got your regular old stuff in there, except you know, you got a wire here, another wire here, wire runs from the positive stud over to here, which is a stud on this. It's usually not on these regulators. This wire runs over to here. This one is usually not insulated, but it's got an insulator on it. And that one's usually insulated, but it's, got, it's not insulated, so. I'll show you this here real quick. There Brush holder, one of the wires. Here's the regulator. Get some light. I don't know if you can see these numbers on here. Let's see if we can get the focus. Anyway, the numbers say D10AC. What that is, the first set of numbers right there. D10AC. And this is the regulator you want. What it does is all regulator is is it senses the RPM of the alternator and then it tells this to start feeding power from the battery to the rotor okay and it adjusts the amount of voltage and amperage going to the rotor to come up with the right voltage coming out of the alternator. Okay, this one wire here it goes to that. The other wire comes off the positive terminal. 
going to there, that gives it the power from the one wire. Now you can pick that regulator up and it comes with the wires. And it also comes with a little piece of paper and you know, details on where to put everything. Because when you install the regulator, your insulator is going to a little different place than normal. Normally this one and this one would be insulated and this one will be grounded. But with this one, this one and this one's insulated and this one's grounded. So that's the difference you got to remember. Spray paint. But that's what's in here. You can pick that up at your local alternator shop probably for 25 bucks for this regulator. And oh, one more important thing. The alternator that you build out of this, this rotor has to test max load 4 amps. It has to be a, a 4 amp rotor. It can't be a 5 amp, it can't be a 6 amp. It's got to be a 4 amp, so it's got to be a used rotor. And why it tests 4 amps to the 5 or 6 is because the armature has absorbed some of the magnetism and it's got some permanent magnetism to it. So it doesn't draw that many amps. Now it's not enough you can really tell much, but it basically doesn't draw as many amps because there's already some magnetism to this so it doesn't have to work as hard. And that's what you have to have for that regulator. And that's what the inside of this looks like. And that's what you have to buy to get it. There's a link on my webpage to that regulator on eBay. <coughs> yeah. There's nothing special about the stator. It's a regular old stator. Now you can get a low RPM stator and put in this and it won't make much difference. It'll just turn it from a 60 amp alternator to about a 35 amp. But amps are overrated. You want something that's going to charge steadily. And you don't got to have a charge controller. None of that with this operation here. That's why I think it's so perfect for micro hydro or anything like that. Uh, wind generator, you probably have to gear it. So you'll lose a little bit of efficiency, but you save four or five hundred dollars on the overall setup. If you just do a little bit of manufacturing on your gear ratio and all that. Uh, probably bigger blades. Like uh, this one here I had running at one time I had three foot blades and I had nine of them on there. And it doesn't spin as fast with three foot blades on there, but it has a whole lot more torque and power. So you can gear it to spin this alternator a lot faster. And uh, that's what I did. And it worked just fine. Uh, you can hook it straight to your batteries. You won't ever overcharge it. And, you know, everybody always talks about, well, what if you're... Uh, wind speeds up and it overspins your blades, well, it takes pretty high wind to overspin them blades. I mean, even like Missouri Wind and Solar, it's like 75, 80 mile an hour winds, and you're rarely going to get a gust like that, at least not where I'm from. Now, wherever you're from, you might. Uh, you might have to take that into account, but people that live in an area like I do, I live in central Arkansas in the hills, so I don't have that problem. But... I'm working on another one of these that will cut in at a lower RPM. Now I didn't design any of this, I didn't invent any of this. You just took research and there's a guy on eBay selling this exact setup as a 1500 watt PMA. It's not. He's on it for 200 bucks. You can go to your alternator shop and buy this brand new. The whole damn thing. Just like it is. I mean with this regulator and everything. Go in and ask him for an AC excited one wire, 10 SI, and this one will cost you anywhere between 60 and 100 dollars, depending on how high your alternator shop is. Uh, they may not know what you're talking about because this regulator is pretty new. Not everybody's got them.
but they're relatively cheap. You can buy it on yourself. So that's it, and uh, I'll see you again next.